Hello, today I'm going to explain how you can simulate threads in JavaScript because JavaScript doesn't have an explicit object thread like C Sharp or Java does, but it does have two methods set timeout and set interval that you can uh, use in order to get at least some of the basic behaviors of threads. You don't have all the features like sleep, span, resume, and some others, but you can specify when it's gonna start and end. With just these two, I guarantee you can do a lot. You might ask, why use threads, or even why do I need something like this for a web application? Well, we all know that nowadays the users have better computers that can handle more process, but we cannot count on that. And we have to consider that a big process might freeze the user's interface, which will for sure frustrate them. So that's exactly when threads become handy, when you have a task that might take a long time to finish, and doing that could freeze the user interface. So, what you need is somehow put this long process in another thread, which will not interfere with the thread that is taking care of the user's interface. How can you do that? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you. First, let's start creating a new website. And give the name how to simulate threads in JavaScript. Okay, I'm gonna start adding the snippets that I created for this tutorial. Okay, so I have here just seven. This tutorial is gonna be small. So it's just a normal title and the reference to the JavaScript file. Okay, you can just see here. We also need to create a JavaScript file. Give the same name. And set this project as startup project. Okay, good. Can delete all this, no problem. So we can save, and now it's gonna show okay. Let's just add uh, some other snippets for this form here. Page content. So if you see, it's just a table with some buttons, and these buttons will call some JavaScript methods that I'm gonna create. And if we see the design, you can notice that is two text area. Okay, we are gonna write on this two text area. I just created two because I wanna show you guys that we can have m a lot of things going on on the page, and it doesn't mean it's gonna freeze the webs at uh, the the page, right? So you will understand this in a, in a minute. Okay, let's start coding the JavaScript file. This is the second time that I put the reference to this PDF, which I would strongly advise you uh, you to read, because it has some good uh, specification about uh, JavaScript language. So let's start with what I called big loop. So it's just a loop that will start from zero to ten thousand, and it will write on that text area just this text here which I'm gonna write right now so I just create some global variables just to you guys understand right so this text is just because I don't like to hard code everywhere so I just create a variable text so if we run now and press it's just gonna go to the text area and write this content this value 10,000 times right so let's save and see what's gonna happen. Add the web config file. And I'm not gonna maximize the website because I want you guys to see. So uh, as you can see, I just have a few buttons and I have this big loop here, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press and you will see that if I try to move the browser, the browser is frozen. After the 10,000 time loop finish, then I can move the browser. Okay? If I press again, one more time, the browser is frozen. For f so if you see, for a few seconds, I think I refreshed the browser, sorry. So for a few seconds, you can see that the browser cannot move. We cannot interact in the, in the browser.
right? Because it's doing a big loop, a big process. So it, this is not cool, right? So this exactly is the time when we can use if you were doing if we were doing this in other language like C sharp, you could we could use threads, right? But we don't have this in JavaScript. What we have is this methods here and I'm gonna explain to you. The first one is the set timeout. Okay. So the the syntax for the set timeout set timeout it's pretty big, it's pretty simple. It's always two parameters. The first parameter is the reference or the expression for the method that will get executed, and the second parameter is the time that will be delayed until this method get executed. So if you when you search to the internet, a lot of people do this, right? They put like between uh, it put they put like as a string as an expression. Then you can ask, is it wrong? No, it's not. But as I told you, in this PDF here, you will understand why I don't like to use that. Only if I need to s use a parameter to pass a parameter to this function, then I could I you I use that way. But doing that, what's gonna do is when you do this, and when this method get executed, it will parse this string to see if if this is a string then it will un understand that it's a parameter to this function. So it will try to parse that string to a method. So you see it first parse the string, then try to see if this method exists, and then gets ex executed. If you do like what I'm doing here, not as a string, but as a reference to this method here, what it's going to do when it gets executed, it will just check, is this does this method exist? Yes, call it. So it's one last step. It's gonna be, a f and you can say, okay, it's just a few millisecond milliseconds faster. Yes, but I like to consider every point of view, right? So for me, doing this is better. But, but the f the thing is, if you wanna do like this, you can pass parameters. You have to create another stuff. You have you can create an object or something like this. But just like this, you can pass parameters like like this or something. Right, so you have to understand. That's why I think it's really important. Really read this specification because you can get these small details. Right. So if we execute it now, so you can see that the first one and just called the tree, the third, and the second just called the fourth. So it's just the same. It's just because I wanted to do the double. So you guys can see I'm gonna press the button twice, and the browser will execute without freezing and everything else. So, I will explain why you need this in a minute. So let's just run the application. 